Dennis, I remember being a fairly new airplane owner many, many moons ago and rebuilt a, a, a much-loved M20C that had the, the uh, bad misfortune to launch the engine and <laughs> kind of need avionics all at the same time and took it to a shop that at the time had a pretty good rep and so forth and they gave me this itemized idea of what everything was going to cost and then you know save your shekels and you just got this and that and you look at the little things and they're, they've got these cooling fans on there and I'm flying an airplane going through the air at almost 200 miles an hour and hopefully more than that occasionally and uh, cooling fans what do I need cooling yeah. fans for come, in, come on you know you're just trying to cheese me out of another couple hundred bucks here and there and he said uh uh you want this thing to work? More important, you want this thing to work in July? Yeah. Cooling, nobody thinks about these things. Nobody talks about these things. But, you know, with some of these boxes, fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, some of these things overheats and fries itself, that thing starts becoming a bargain. Tell me what you know about cooling fans. They do exactly what you say. They take a compact package of high computing power avionics, transmitters, and we've got a lot of transmitters in there that are small, many radios. They get really hot inside. And these will move 25 to 30 cubic feet a minute of air per minute, taking that hot air out and exchanging it with a, a cooler air. And it will significantly reduce the temperature at which those avionics run, extending the life considerably. In fact, with a cooling fan, you can expect that you would never have a failure due to overheating. Without it, it won't give you much life on them. No, I was taught early on that the two biggest enemies of any uh, avionics package are vibration and heat. That's right. And heat's a killer. Heat's a killer. We're solving the vibration, vibration problems. This solves the heat problem. Interesting. How do you spec out? How do you know? Uh, well, I assume the shop would know, but when you start thinking about, uh, you know, everybody now is tearing their panels to pieces and putting right. in great glass and great gadgets and you know, the Wonder Box from Mars. That's the right, more, more, more heat. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the Mockbuster Thunder Crunch 2000 right. Mark II. It's right. great stuff. How do you effectively judge what you need? Where does it go? What I mean, how do you really figure out what you have and make sure that it is, you've got enough? One good way is look at the ports on the back of the radios. Um, on your radio package, you'll see a port like this on the back. That almost always means it needs cooling. But you're going to need one for each, at least each com. You're going to need one for your transmitter, uh, a, a transponder. So in most cases, you'll need a minimum of three. Now with the big glass panels, you, know, you might need four or five of them. Some of the glass panels require cooling. That is a requirement as part of the certification. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you know if you had a failure? Well, we make a unit that will actually give you an enunciator if the fan quits. Mm -hmm. or if it slows down or not giving it enough air. Mm -hmm. So that it, if when you get on the ground, then you can uh, get a replacement. Or luckily, we haven't had to replace any, but it will at least give you the enunciation if you've had a failure. But typically, anything with a transmitter or with a glass on it, you're going to need cooling. And the new generation of avionics, uh, such as they are, I mean, it, uh, have the capacity to produce a tremendous amount tremendous of Tremendous amount of heat. You know, the devices are getting smaller, but they have as much power in them and we're just putting more in them. And we're just give, giving them a lot, a lot of capability. The five pounds in a two pound bag syndrome. You bet, you bet. I mean, look at your home computer. I mean, you had a lot of boards, they're spaced six inches apart and you had a big fan on the end of it. Now put another 40 boards in there. And you're yeah, describing yeah, your 182, that's, huh? That's, that's, that you described the 182. That's oh why my. you need cooling. Okay. It's, it's a very low cost insurance policy. Now, for somebody who's had uh, intermittent failures and, and uh, life, lifetime issues and so forth, but with an existing panel, is this, is this something they should be looking into and checking with their avionics shop to find out whether or not they've got adequate cooling? Is this uh, usually oh, absolutely. a scenario? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. I think we were discussing a situation uh, that I had earlier in my very early days of flying in which I had a DME that had no cooling on it. I was a VFR pilot, and my DME would never work. And so I'd turn it off until I got close to a place I had identified as a fix in the airport. Then I'd turn it on, and it would operate for five minutes. Got back. I wasn't even aware of cooling at that time myself. Mm -hmm. Talked to the manufacturer. They said, put a cooling fan on it. Never had that failure again. But, uh, but you missed the ability to fry eggs on the that, That's correct. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. It was pretty hot. Interesting. Okay. Well, we appreciate the debt on that. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right.
Aero TV is brought to you by Freedom Through Innovation. It's what led us to develop Cirrus Flying 2.0, the framework for a bold new take on private aviation. And as a result, the gap between the aircraft we produce and those of our competitors continues to widen. Cirrus knows where the personal aircraft industry is headed. We're already there.